Well, today we have a full house. We've got... I love that show. I do too. It was a really good one. <laughs> so we have our HVAC guys here and they are starting on the HVAC system, which is amazing because that means heat. Heat in the house. Unfortunately, we don't actually get to turn that heat on until we get in the house and get all our insulation up. Yeah, it's a must at this point. We're reaching, you know, later part of the fall and it just started to be really, so really cold. cold. That's why Melissa has 20 jackets on. <laughs> no, it's only three today. But we need to stay out of their way for at least the next 48 hours. So our plan originally was to continue working on the siding. And we've got to keep going around the house so that all of our lines match up. But we discovered a problem. And that problem is we have an issue going on with our gable end truss here on what is the north side of our home. So you guys know that we've been getting all of our Everlog concrete siding up on the exterior portion of the house. We got all the way up until the corner that you see back here behind me. When we rounded the corner and planned on working our way up this wall, we noticed that we had a big bow up in the gable end. We'll show you why that is. So as we move inside, I want to say sorry for all the noise because HVAC is going in, so there's a lot of drilling and banging and all of that. I'll try to talk quickly and loudly. So what is causing the bowing in our gable end is the two by four on the center, the longest two by four that makes up the very centerpiece of our gable end truss has bowed out as it's dried. So it has popped the sheeting out a good inch, maybe more. It's a little difficult to see on film, but you can tell with that ripple in the tape, how much that entire gable end is popping out. So we cannot do siding the way that it is. It's not going to lay flat, especially with the material that we picked, which is a little something different for the gable end. So had we already put all of our siding up and this happened, we would have had a real mess on our hands. We probably would have had crack siding. So I'm really grateful that we caught it early but either way it can't be like that so we talked to the folks that manufactured our trusses and they are going to be coming out hopefully tomorrow to try to figure out a way for this so that we can continue on with our siding and get our butts inside here and get warm with our hvac system working so there is a lot that is happening here inside the house over the next couple of days whether it be a crew coming in to repair our gable and truss that is damaged or having the HVAC installed by the pros because that's not something Melissa and I wanted to tackle and screw up ourselves. <laughs> There's just a lot happening. There's a lot of people that are in here. We want to make sure that we stay out of their way so they can get their work done. But just because we are not going to be in the house does not mean that we are not going to be working. So we're going to head outside and show you what we're going to be working on. We still have to work? Yeah. Sorry. Come on, Melissa. Hey, Coda. that off <laughs> yeah you do meanwhile this guy back here totally jealous won't come yeah, over but he's totally jealous oh well, now that you're covered in horse snot and spit what are we working on i prefer to call them kisses i'm sure, covered we'll, in kisses we'll, we'll go with that <laughs> so our horses have been eating off the ground since we got them about two months ago and we have been meaning to build them a horse feeder we just haven't had a good day to do it because we've been so busy on the house but since we've been forced out of the house today is the perfect time to actually get that built so if you guys have been following along you may remember that a couple of hi buddy <laughs> Dakota, do you like that i'm trying to talk man i'm trying to talk <laughs> Him too. Hey, hey, we're trying to record a YouTube video, man. Come Are you on. Give us some space? Okay, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Anyway, like I was saying, if you'll remember and you've been following along, this loafing shed right back here behind Melissa, we built that a couple of months ago now. The horses have been using that as their, uh, their shelter. They're supposed to be using it as their shelter anyway. Yeah. They have been kind of intermittently, but yeah, it's been working the, out. When the sun is out, they go into it. Yeah, oddly enough. I think they're just looking for shade. When it rains, no go. Mm-mm. So when we ordered their loafing shed, we went ahead and ordered a Clenny pipe structure feeder as well. It's going to cover their food and get it up off the ground. Now that it's getting wet and muddy, we don't really like feeding the horses on the ground. So this has been sitting here quite a while. We've been waiting for the perfect day to start it. Today is that day. Today is that day. And Melissa and I are going to try to get as much work done as we possibly can. I'm sure the horses would appreciate it. But schedule wise, it is kind of a tricky day for us to be taking on a new project. Why is that? Right. Yeah, we got a phone call and our local media got 
wind of the toy drive and they want to raise awareness for acorn which is our children's cancer organization out here of course we want to raise as much awareness for acorn as we possibly can so we welcome them to come out they're going to do a quick little news story on the toy drive and so that's right in the middle of the day so we're going to try to get to work they're going to come out here and then hopefully we can kind of get this wrapped up so we can get the horse's feet up off the ground so cool can't wait The weather has unfortunately taken a turn for the worst here today. Uh, we have the news station actually coming on here to do their recording. So they're already on their way. I think at this yeah. point, we're just gonna wait for them to show up. We'll work with them to get our story completed, their story completed. And then uh, with that done, we'll move back into the shop. We'll move the structure in here and get it assembled out of the rain so we can work in a very dry environment. Yeah, this is definitely a work inside kind of day. Sure. And so we don't want to spread out. Really, all we have time to do is spread everything out. And we don't want to do that and then have them tripping over all the pieces. So we'll just wait an hour, have a cup of coffee. No slip and fall <laughs> injuries, right? No, that would be pretty bad. So we'll do that first. Then we will get inside and get to work. Sounds good. This one. So inappropriate. So, I mean, this pile over here, this is just yesterday's. And today, more packages have come in. And so, it's just been, it's been unreal. He's got to, he's got to lift the camera up here for tall Jeremy. The tripod had to be higher because... 6'2". 6'3". Oh, sorry. 6'3". Sorry. Uh, it's become very fun. You know, we never know what to expect. He'll show up and the first question I always ask him is, how many today? Um, and the numbers that we've been getting have been... I mean, a hundred plus packages on a daily basis. It's been overwhelming, but in the best sort of way. Well, that was a lot of fun. And we got to be on the local news. Yeah, I've never been on the local news. Except for that shoplifting spree you went on in back in 08. I mean, for that, there was that. I like gum. Your face was plastered everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and thank you guys once again for uh, contributing and all the help you have provided with getting all this accomplished. Really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, this is just such an amazing way to raise awareness for ACOIN, our local organization, and then just any organization out there. They're out there in all the cities and most of the major hospitals, and a lot of times people just don't know about them, but they're a wonderful place to give. So we're glad we can raise some awareness. But now it is 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and we've got to get something done today. Let's get it done. You're going to move this whole thing into the garage? Yeah, piece of cake. You got it. Grab a side. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> We can't pick up. I'm kidding. We're using the tractor, obviously. Forgot. Deal. I've got the whole world at my fingertips. I feel it flying. I feel infinite. I know that we're the kind to think along. So other lines, but we'll be fine. Come along now, the sky is endless now. We are limitless, we are limitless now. Come along now, the sky is endless now. We are limitless, we are limitless now. The sky is calling, calling out to some new you want to just lay everything out like a puzzle and all you can put together? Yes, ma'am. That's the plan. We got everything laid out for the initial frame of the feeder, and then we're going to start assembling that. Once we get that done, we can unload the rest of it and do the roof and the floor of it. I'm getting flashbacks of our plenty pipe structure for Spartan Build. It's really nice, though. Everything looks like it's really well put together. Couldn't be more impressed with planning. They make a great product. They do. And the best part is they label each piece so you're not searching. I love that. It makes it's so much easier. Much easier. Shh. He's doing it. He's reading directions. I was like, what? What are you talking about? Is <laughs> that really heavy? Oh, probably to you, yeah. What are you trying to say? So you're my tiny little lady friend. The problem you can't pick that up, and I stand corrected. Look at her go. Well, 
originally we were going to leave everything that we weren't using on the frame, but then it turned out that the frame is actually made up of the pieces that we need to build it, which is brilliant packaging. No waste. I like it, but it does require us to now dismantle this little frame. So to get started with our feeder, we're gonna be building the left and right walls. They kind of mirror one another. They're built exactly the same, set up exactly the same. We have the layout set here for our first wall. All the connection points are gonna be put together using some hex bolts with the exception of these skids on the very bottom. This will allow for us to drag the structure around where we need it, and all that will be put together using some carriage bolts. You wanna help? <laughs> We're gonna stick these bolts through these holes on the bottom, okay? Can you find the other side? Nice job, dude. Going to the tight. One more time, one more time. One more time. Come on. Alright, man. Same thing on the other side. You ready? Do it. Remember it? You gotta wiggle it around until you find it. Oh, quick, look at him go. Oh, fast. Whoa, whoa, easy turbo. Now it's two men reading directions. <laughs> it's the big one teaching the little one that it's okay to read directions. Stay out of it, mom. I must study them. Do you like directions, Eli? No. See? <laughs> natural reaction. We don't need no stinking directions. All over again for the other side. You hearing this, Eli? Mom's Mama did a good credit. job. Let's get it up. Lots of cute little helpers. Picked up a new cute little helper though. Look at that. I'm more funny. I'm actually surprised he lasts as long. Where are you going? Go inside. I don't know. He disappeared. Oh, seriously. Oh. Is here to help. Helping hand. We ran out of hands. <laughs> Three more hands. We need a third. How many Susan does it take to assemble a horse feeder? Yeah. Is that a sign of it? Are you not having fun right now? You know what we could do with this though? Get more horses. Treat it like a bobsled in the wintertime and start snowing. Oh. Put some skis on the bottom of it. I like it. Let's do it. Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Let's get going. It's Time. Now we got the main base of the frame all put together and standing and we are going to put three brackets on that will make up the floor. The three brackets will support some 2 by 8s that are also provided with the kit. Basically all those 2 by 8s sit on top and the way you get those things in a position is there's a notch that's cut out on one of these brackets allows for you to set the wooden slats flat and then slide them down, which uh, results in a floor, hopefully. Right? Sounds pretty straightforward. Very simple. All right, let's see. And I will say that I am so glad that we are working inside. Hopefully you guys can hear us over the rain. Sometimes that gets pretty loud on the tin roof. But we were just talking about how long it's been since we worked in here. We did a lot in here with the loft and the stairs and the chicken coop was built in here, but we haven't actually worked in here together in about seven months since we built the pony walls down in our crawl space. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to be back indoors. It working. is. No mud, no nothing to contend with. Nice bright light. I love it. I was born to roam Never finding my way home. 
All right, we got the two big kids out here to help us really quick because we are realizing that this frame is getting heavier and heavier the further along we get. So, come on in, you can help me at the front. The baby can be at the back helping mom. We're gonna pick this thing up and get it moved out back toward our doorway, at least as close as we can, so that we're ready to finally pull this thing out without making big gouges across our concrete slab. Ready? Ready. Yep. Let's go. For tonight, we are going to be getting all the hinges on for the gates. There's actually a gate that opens on each side and then the opposite sides, I believe, fold down. So there's a bunch of hinges that we need to get into place and then we need to get this moved outside. Obviously, that's not going to be happening tonight. We don't want to add any more weight to this by putting the gates on or putting all of the wood slats on the floor of it. So we're going to get the hinges on. We're going to call it a night. We're going to get the tractor, put this thing out where we need it to be, and then we will complete it in place. So the next day, we're moving the show outside. The weather is cooperating for the time being. It is supposed to rain this afternoon. Okay. So Melissa and I are gonna grind and get it as far as we can with uh, finishing up this structure. That's right. So now that we got it out here, we can actually start adding some weight to the structure. We're going to start with the floor and then we will start putting the cage walls on and then move to the roof. Floor, cage floor. It sounds so violent and intense and serious. <laughs> Not that serious. Six inch on the floor. Yeah. Are they? Eight inch, but yeah, that's oh. what the <laughs> Whether it's six inches or eight inches, it's all just a matter of perspective. All right, look at that. No problem. Wrestling with the bones beneath your skin, show love to love into the staple. She who keeps you standing round. Take your pick now. Wind crying, pursuing. Your shoes are backwards again. What do you think? You like it? Okay, lay down. I'm gonna put these on top of you. I'm joking, Eli. I'm joking. <laughs> just does whatever. Before we put the fourth and final wall on the horse feeder here, we're gonna demonstrate how the two different sides work. So on this side, it hooks up at the top to hold it into place. And then when you wanna lower it, you just lift it and it pivots down on these little pivoter brackets. And you put the feed right in the middle, whether you wanna do like a large round bale or a large square bale or just flakes of hay and then that cage rests on the food and it prevents the horses from it won't be upright like this it'll lay flat on the food and it prevents them from dragging all of their food onto the ground and it also slows down their eating a little bit so they don't gobble it all down 
Then on the front and back walls, the back wall is the one that we're going to be putting on next. These actually swing open like this, and this is how you load in like a large bale. So you would just open up either the front or the back, load your bale in, swing shut just like a gate, and then latches like that. All we have left to do is the roof over our feeder. And so this kit allows for you to kind of customize whatever kind of roof it is you want. We're gonna go with a real simple option of just a shed style lean to kind of roof where all the moisture and snow can fall off the backside and not affect the feed or the horses. So we're gonna get going with that. We have four by four poles that we have to cut, get stuck in place, and then we'll start adding our rafters and finally our metal on top of that. For our four by four posts, we're gonna be using untreated uh, four by fours that we had left over up in our storage loft. That's all we had, so that's what we're going with. It's our friendly UPS man with today's drop off for the toy drive. We're gonna get those into the garage and then we'll get back to work on our roof. Holy cow, I know what I'm doing tonight. Unboxing, <laughs> back to work. Because the Clenny pipe structure roofs are customizable, they don't come with the roof part, so we've been using the scrap lumber to do all of the rafters and the framing for the roof. And luckily we had some metal left over from our barn build so that all of our outbuildings can continue to match, which is kind of important to us. So we're going to be putting on the burnished slate, the same color that we used on the horse run and also our barn. Unfortunately, those pieces are a muddy mess because they were stored outside and so we're gonna to try to wash them off. They're already cut to length, and then we'll slop them up and go inside. Well, I've never come. The space that felt my own. And I've never come.
Okay. Oh, thank you. I got it. I got it. I got it. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Happy horses with me? Yes. Well, I'm going to make it easier for a second. Now they can Good. I'm going to dry off and get warm. Hold it. Drag it out there tomorrow? Yep. This week didn't go as planned, but at this point, we've learned to roll with the punches and be flexible. It also was the perfect opportunity to finally complete this project that we kept pushing to the back burner. We assumed that by the time we got the feeder complete, the truss would be fixed and we'd be back to work. But when they came out to remedy the issue, we discovered that it was a bit more complicated and severe than we originally thought. My initial reaction was stress, but what I've learned through the years is that when plans change, it's usually for a reason. God's little way of making sure that everything falls into place just as it should and just how it needs to be. <laughs>